venus is one of the most important planet in a horoscope venus deals with luxuries and comfort more so in simple words venus is about success in the mercury series we have learned how the connection of venus with mercury decides whether one will be successful or not going further if you know the we know the good houses and bad houses so far right planets in mutual kendras to each other this is a great secret of parasha right uh, that i taught in the parasha course in depth planet in first fourth seventh and tenth house to each other are the mutual karakas what does it mean they are working towards each other this is a secret of parashar which is nowadays understood as a secret of nadi astrology however the truth is it is all the astrology of sages people understood a little bit wrote books on it called it now and this is my opinion regarding it you may disagree but the truth is the truth however coming back to my point <clears throat> planet in 1 4 7 10 to each other our mutual karakas this is one of the most important combination from parasha you know you know about raja yoga if one have raja yoga one will succeed in life really look at horoscopes you will come across many such horoscopes where you see raja yoga and the person is not successful three factors lead to it i teach it uh, like in other courses first of all what i say in my panchang course if the panchang is not powerful all the good combinations goes for a toss point 1 point 2 the planet creating the combination should be equally powerful ninth and tenth lord conjoined but weak raj yoga is a far fetched tree and third thing raj yoga is applicable for those raj yoga is applicable for a prince there are levels for a combination if you if some if a, if a prince have a raj yoga he can become a king but what about a normal person who is not born in a royal family can he still become a king with a raj yoga no simple answer is no never so there are gradation of raj yoga that you have to understand if you don't want to commit a mistake while reading a chart coming back to my topic planet in first fourth seventh tenth houses to each other are mutually helping and supporting each other this is known as paraspar karak so to say venus have moon in seventh from it Gemini considers it a very great raj yoga. Venus in seventh to moon, it is a very great raj yoga. Why? Because Venus, the comfort, luxury, and happiness is supporting moon, the mental peace, and moon, the mind is all focused on Venus, comfort, luxury, vehicle, success, etc., etc. In this world, we are living in kali yuga. there are two benefic planet one is jupiter one is venus who is bigger in giving the beneficence that's out of question that depends on the horoscope whether jupiter is more powerful or venus if venus is more powerful venus is a bigger benefic planet for you if jupiter is more powerful jupiter is a bigger benefic planet for you right that depends on the horoscope but venus indicates happiness planets which fall in 1 4 7 10 houses from venus and planet which falls in the 5th and 9th house from venus right planet in kendra support each other whereas planet in trikonas konas first house fifth house ninth house to each other work together to achieve the same target both of these are very equal condition if you have to understand 1 5 9 you understand it this way 
first house is you fifth house is your child and ninth house is your father your father have earned many things in his life he gave it to you you will earn many things in your life you will give it to your child and your child's duty will be to look after you and your father in their old age right mutually supporting each other is 159 connection 14710 connection is helping each other helping each other achieve a motive so there is one particular thing you know planet in 159 to each other will selflessly help each other whereas planet in 14710 it will be you help me in one area then i help you in one area so to say if mars and uh, venus are one seven to each other then it will be like you get a happiness good result of venus but you will get that happiness only after courage only after you support the signification of mars understand this very clearly planet in kendra to each other the results only come to pass when the other planet is also activated if you want to achieve some happiness without showing your courage without using your risk taking abilities venus and mars and kendra to each other near horoscope you certainly cannot achieve this is the astrological framework that you should be synchronized with if you want success in life astrologically otherwise no matter how many remedies you do how many puja mantra yagya you do doesn't matter if you are not synchronized with your birth horoscope nothing is going to work right way the basic point is all the planets in 1 4 7 10 5 9 houses from venus gives you happiness working in the area of those planets give you happiness these planet indicate those areas where you can be satisfied where you can have a sense of satisfaction these are the things which lead you to happiness this is what you find solace in do uh it have multiple uses if you think over it you can just take out 10 15 20 uses of the things that i have told you just a few things let me tell you first of all i have suppose <clears throat> mercury with venus lagna is the same rashi is kendra as well as kona both books reading learning gives me happiness if you want to gift me something better gift a book things related to mercury right very helpful when you want to know what gift to get you know also to understand it is satisfaction venus is also the significator of marriage marital life a cool calm satisfied contented good marital life depends on satisfaction satisfaction is a double edged sword basically you should be satisfied but the pursuit of betterment should not stop at any given point of time so to say your venus and seventh lord are not in kendra or kona to each other there is one thing through the mercury series i have told you many combinations this is skipped my mind these are basics right these are basics so i think you know people will already know it but uh, <laughs> my expectations are wrong say venus is in pisces the seventh lord is saturn that is in aquarius now they are in a 212 connection but still there will be happiness in matter life because they are powerful the rashi falling in 212 are making both the planet strong though they are not in good positions from each other but still there will be a satisfaction this is the basic point that you need to understand a rider a ruling condition if this is applicable ignore the previous one 
you get happiness, contentment, and satisfaction only in those areas whose lord or the planet who signify that area. For example, if you talk of professional satisfaction, you have to check the tenth lord, Saturn. Satisfaction in business, tenth lord from Mercury, etc. Can only come when the lord of the house and the significator related to that particular matter is well placed from Venus. Things when it is not well placed from Venus, planets when they are not well placed from Venus tend to give dissatisfaction related to that area. It is both internal dissatisfaction and also it is a public dissatisfaction as well. I see talking of public dissatisfaction, you have to understand. Suppose Mercury is in uh, 12th house from Venus. You are not happy with your intelligence. You think you are not well read. That is okay. Because Venus also indicates enjoyment and Mercury indicates intellect. You don't like molding, challenging your thought process, your thinking, etc. That is also okay. But specifically in relation to the family, and this you need to understand, because Venus also indicates the family aspect of life. So when Mercury is in 12th house from Venus, it is probably the case that your family members are also not satisfied with the level of knowledge that you have. This can be because of two reasons. First of all, you haven't chosen the field that they wanted you to study in point one or point two, using your knowledge, you don't help your family members. This is a very important, very crucial point used everywhere. Suppose you want to, uh, suppose your second Lord is transiting in second house from Venus. At this point of time, you want to invest money. You want to purchase a land for a purpose to sell it later on. The second Lord is transiting in second house from Venus. It is making a 212 connection with Venus. You may invest in that property, but when you sell it, the return will not be that much which lead you to satisfaction and happiness. Hence, this particular point should always be kept in mind before taking any decision or before keeping, uh, before reading a chart, before matching a chart, anything. All these things that I am teaching you in this particular series, you have to understand this very elaboratively. If uh, the spouse is having 11th Lord their 11th Lord in Kendra to Venus, whereas you have your 11th Lord and not in Kendra to Kendra or Kona to Venus, then what happened? The spouse is satisfied from the income. You are not satisfied from it. You are not satisfied from income. So what happens now? There is a point of clash where you are constantly running behind money and your spouse thinks that why this person is so much worried, he is uselessly worried, leads to a level of disagreement. Also, the dasha antar dashas of planet not well placed from Venus make you be dissatisfied in that dasha antar dasha and there is a pursuit of happiness. This is something, these are those areas where you should put your mind, should define your limits and as you know that it is your basic tendency not to be satisfied in these fields, you have to rather improve it understand it and quench the thrust for dissatisfaction because if someone is dissatisfied, their life is highly miserable. That is for sure. Second point, this is very important. You check the Rashi of Venus because Venus also indicate luxuries and comforts. This is very important. This may look like a standard technique. This is not so. Venus is going through, suppose Aquarius, okay? Aquarius, what does Aquarius indicate? If you don't know about it, I have done many courses on Rashi's which will give you a good info on what does Aquarius indicate. For the time being, say it is Saturn. 
Aquarius is lauded by Saturn. What does Saturn signify? Saturn signify professional life, disease, servants, people helping you, etc. Now, if you want to, suppose, if you want to take a professional decision, you should take that professional decision only when Saturn when Venus is going through the Rashi of Saturn, because Saturn is the Karka for profession, point one, or Venus is going through the Rashi of that planet, which is connected to your 10,000 horoscope. Suppose Venus is going through Aries and you have Mars situated in the 10th house. So while Venus is transiting in Aries or Scorpio, also you can do this. What you can do? Take a professional decision. Or if you want to take any professional decision, take it at this point of time as the Rashi, which is getting transited by Venus, as the Rashi Lord is connected to the 10th house, your decision will lead you to happiness, contentment and satisfaction. Otherwise, suppose you are going to take a professional decision right now. Venus is transiting in Aquarius and your 10th Lord is situated in Capricorn. This is a 212 connection with Venus. You will, if you take that professional decision right now, it will lead you to misery. You will later on regret the decision. If you want to save yourself from regret, regretting it, don't take the decision right now. This is the prime reason that in Muhurta, the Melvic influences of on Venus and Jupiter is considered of supreme importance. It is told that no good thing should be done when Venus or Jupiter are combust or falls under bad influence in transit. So you know when to invest money. So you know when to put your uh, money in stock market, cryptocurrency, right? When Venus is transiting in the Rashi, which falls in your second or 11th house, or Venus is transiting that Rashi, whose Lord is getting connected to the second house, 11th house, second Lord or 11th Lord of your horoscope. There is just one thing that you have to keep in mind that the connection should be positive. Suppose Venus is going through the Rashi of uh, Mercury. This Mercury is the 8th Lord and it is connected to the 11th house. It is situated in the 11th house. Now it is 8th Lord situated in the 11th house. 8th house Lord, wherever it goes, it destroys that house. That means Mercury is on the duty to destroy wealth. Being connected to the 11th house, don't invest money. It will destroy wealth rather than giving it to you. Use your mind and the basics of astrology. Always don't forget it. Going deeper into it. Venus is like quite a very, very crucial planet. For success in life, this is where I started. <clears throat> for success in life, for success in this materialistic world, specifically this time of Kali Yuga, is more supported by Venus. Venus becomes more important considering the time that we are living in, considering the things that society considers as important, considering the things which society considers at, as, you know, uh, uh, like as mad parameters of success. The strength of Venus is very important, right? To check the strength, what you have to do, you have to check the schedule of the planet, the aggregate schedule. It has to be more than 100%. We have learned it in the case of like in one video of Mercury series, I told you how to check it. Follow the series, right? You should see all of my YouTube videos my purpose is to teach you astrology. I have already clarified. It. My purpose is to teach you astrology. And when you want to learn, watch every video. It is offered for free, right? Don't share. Watch all. <laughs> Nothing to shy about, by the way. Okay. The schedule of Venus should be good. And see, schedule is not the final authority. Let me be very honest with you. Shadbal is quickly checking the strength of the planet. However, those who are my students, I don't advise them checking Shadbal blindly. Depending on one formula blindly is never the way to success. Keep it very clear in your mind. The strength of success, the strength of Venus 
the strength of the rashi lord of venus the strength of the sign lord in which sign venus is situated and if these two factors are very important if someone wants to have a successful life now i don't want to say that success see so for someone success is getting rich for someone success is getting the desired thing for someone success is having a financial independence for someone success is living with family for someone success is being able to survive without having to work whatever is your definition of success that will only come to pass where venus is powerful that is point 1 and point 2 is the d60 of venus and the important formula the important funda is to not to see the divisional chart but to check the dt's of the divisional chart i have an article by the name of d60 sastyamsha devata an article on the dt's of d60 where i have explored how every dt of d60 is interpreted which dt of d60 is good which dt of d60 is bad that i have clearly defined in that article check if the venus falls under the rulership of a benefic d60 dt the person leads a happiness happy life venus falls under a malefic d60 there is misery in the life of the person remember venus and saturn have very close connections venus and saturn are the best friends like many people ask me this question lagu parashari known as jatak chandrika udaya pratip known by many names is a very small book dealing with the results of vimshotri dasha antar dasha if one masters that book one don't need to look at other texts this is the most commented upon book i think on lagu parashari there are more than 200 to 300 commentaries that are by people however all of these commentaries are none of that commentary is completely exhaustive to be very honest with you so there is a very you know there is there is a very strange thing lagu parashari tells you that when venus is good saturn dasha goes good venus dasha is bad when saturn is good saturn dasha goes bad venus dasha is good try to understand venus and saturn are friends but they are equally opposite to each other when venus is powerful the misery from saturn is less and happiness is more the result of saturn can diminish when venus is powerful when saturn is powerful there is more misery the result of venus get diminished right so a weak venus is producer of misery and this misery is higher greater than the misery produced by saturn because saturn only produces you misery whereas venus also produces you dissatisfaction that is a worst case scenario for someone to be successful in life venus have to be powerful the sign lord of venus have to be powerful and for someone to be happy the d60 lord of venus should be good otherwise they will not be happy right simply told clearly put years of experience check it in the horoscope and you will see stunning results for sure all right and the secret about venus and saturn i will repeat this is very important if venus is good saturn dasha gives you good result if saturn is good venus dasha gives you good result this is the basic point there is an interdependency on each of them you know the chart where venus and saturn both are equally powerful generally such people i have seen doing nothing let me be very honest with you generally such people you will see they create a waste of their life they do a waste of their life venus saturn both are because you know what to succeed you have to go in one direction there is a specialist and there is someone who knows everything little 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 
that is of no use. Venus, Saturn, both powerful. The horoscope is not good, is what I have seen. One of them have to be powerful. Venus, powerful. You have a blessed life. You just have to use it. Saturn, powerful. Create your way to success. However, both of them powerful. Both of them weak. It's not a good condition. Generally, such people like destroy their life only and do nothing else. Now there is one more point. The first point that I talked about that is Venus is attachment. Venus indicate the things that you are attached to. So it is very important. Check where your Venus is situated in. The ascendant of the spouse or the moon sign of the spouse should fall in Kendra or Kona. 14710 or 59 houses from the Venus placement. For you to remain attached to your spouse, if this is not fulfilled, then in that scenario, generally you will see that after five, seven years of marriage, the spouse will lose attachment to each other and will become ignorant. That is not a good condition to have. This you should always see. And as we have done with Mercury again, see the planets supported by Venus and the planet not supported by Venus. That gives you a glimpse of in which areas of life you can have satisfaction and happiness and which area of life you will not have happiness and satisfaction. This is the most important point that you should check from Venus. We'll continue about Venus in the next video of the series. Thank you for watching.